Now, getting to a real war, because we're talking about the possibility of real conflict in the Middle East spreading, Israel is more and more uh, isolated right now. Turkey, Egypt, historic allies are now, as poss possibly as a result of the Arab Spring, but possibly because of all the changes in the region as well, backing away from Israel. Now, this Palestinian vote. What do you see as the risks to the Palestinian vote? They point out that they've been waiting for years and that negotiations have not borne fruit. Well, first of all, look, I'm not chairman of the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, but on this, there doesn't need to be partisanship. This is something that Democrats and Republicans can agree on. Every time the Palestinians and the Arab world, ha world sh uh, have shown up for negotiations with Israel, Israel has shown up and Israel has made painful concessions. For the Palestinian leadership now to say that they refuse to negotiate uh, and instead they're going to rush to the United Nations and seek unilateral uh, recognition of their sovereignty defies history uh, and is exceedingly dangerous. And so I've introduced a very simple resolution in Congress uh, that uh, any nation in the, United, in the UN uh, that votes to unilaterally recognize the Palestinian state uh, is subject to a cutoff of their foreign military financing. You cannot add, come to Congress and ask the t with, uh, with one hand, ask the taxpayer uh, to fund your sovereign countries and, and go to the United Nations with the other hand and vote uh, unilaterally recognize the Palestinian state the and undermine our most important strategic and democratic ally in the world. The administration does not want any of these fund cutoffs, whether it's the Palestinian Authority security funds or what you're proposing. They say that that only makes the situation more complicated. Well, I disagree with the administration on this issue. Uh, in fact, I think that we have shown repeatedly uh, a patience with negotiations, a patience with the process. We have supported the Palestinian Authority uh, in the interest of negotiating with Israel, and now they are pulling the plugs on negotiations. You pull the plug, you shouldn't get the cash. Hasn't Israel taken steps on settlements and others that the U.S. has, the, the president and others have been very critical of, because they have uh, basically cut off many of the options for a final settlement, for, for a final... Uh, Israel has a final piece of Israel has consistently said to the leadership of the Palestinian Authority, if you have a difference with us on settlements, negotiate. If you have a difference with us on building permits, negotiate. If you have a difference with us on any of these issues, negotiate. And the response from the Palestinian Authority has been, we will not negotiate. We will bypass negotiations, run to the United Nations and do something that is exceedingly dangerous and isn't going to result in statehood. If the Palestinian Authority really wanted statehood, they would negotiate with Israel. Instead, they're going to the United they Nations on a, on a symbolic decades. press release. They say that they've seen decades and decades of negotiations and nothing has brought them any closer to a state. When Egypt negotiated with Israel, Israel uh, gave up the Sinai. Uh, every country that has ever negotiated with Israel uh, has come to a, a fair conclusion, uh, in those, a fair settlement in those negotiations. The Palestinian Authority can't say that negotiations won't work if they're not willing to show up and try and make them work. Congressman Israel, thank you very much. Thank you.